All right. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are glad to have you here. It is me and Nick, and we have a special subject that we're going to be talking about in this today's video. Um, so basically, we're going to be discussing some of these um, ritual practices that we are offering for anyone that is wanting to take advantage of it. And what we're going to be discussing is a little bit of information on what exactly is taking place with these different ritual services. And we're going to be discussing some of the similarities between me and Nick's rituals, as well as some of the differences between our rituals and how this can offer value to any of you that are listening to this. And ultimately how this can also come together with what we're forming with this occult order, order 47. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's jump out the gate with talking about some of the similarities between these rituals that we both offer. And let's start with breaking down like what exactly is happening with this type of ritual. So do you want to start with yours, your service? Sure. So Jeremiah, as you know, he offers the vampire ritual which is done on the 29th of every month. And I needed to create something that was sort of similar where I can do a ritual every month that people can kind of participate in and that adds value to people's life and kind of adds in this energetic resonance of um, having, what would you call it, like a support for deeper initiations and like emotional processing and stuff like that. And when I was sitting there thinking about it, the first thing that popped in my head was Hakate. And so I meditated with Hakate. I did an invocation and I began to kind of create this, this ritual. And I decided to perform it on the full moon and kind of align the ritual with the um astrology of each full moon so for example the, uh, the full moon yesterday so i just performed the ritual and it was very very cool and um i had about 13 participants which is awesome and that was a full moon in gemini so i kind of geared the ritual um with an undertone of a gemini essence so you know bringing balance to both of our aspects of feminine and masculine, for example. And so the ritual that I do is a similar ritual as Jeremiah's vampire ritual. Um, but the difference is, is that it links you in with the energy of Hakate. And Hakate is one of those forces that you know you you really want to work with for deeper emotional, processing and deeper um, initiations, especially through the clip off. So it's an entity you at least want to have worked with once or multiple times or throughout your initiations. Um, but Hakate and Lucifer both, they sort of have rulership over the clip off and the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. So those are definitely two forces that you want to you know, have a really good relationship with, you know, especially before initiating or throughout the process of initiation. And so the ritual that I do is designed to link you in with the energy of Hakate. And then I've created a sort of like a treasure box. And then I printed Hakate's wheel on the top of the box. And I print out the participants' uh, names and pictures and then I ritualize it within during the process of the ritual and then put their names and pictures into the, the box. And this box represents Hakate's um, like energy grid work. And this grid, you, you're able to tune into this grid work. And by being able to tune into that, it can help you to, um, you know, supports you in emotional processing taps you into the underworld, which is your subconscious mind, 
and kind of you know helps your energy field to resonate more with these darker subconscious archetypes so that we can have a, a lot more easier time when we're initiating and um yeah i mean there's it could be a life changing type of a ritual and so i created it and you know me and jeremiah got together and we thought you know these really support each other you know the vampire and the hakate ritual they can support each other and they can only enhance the um person that's uh taking part in the ritual it can only enhance their energy field and it almost could be like it works together so we decided to combine them if you want to go into a little bit about that for sure for sure and that's that's an awesome breakdown so Let's start with creating like a little bit of a context of kind of like how this all came together. So I started doing a vampire ritual. I want to say I started in 2000. It was probably really late 2020. And then, you know, obviously going into 2021 is when I started picking that up pretty significantly. And I was influenced by another... Um, practitioner at the time that was kind of doing like similar ritualistic practices where the idea was kind of like transferring the energy body of the initiate into the participant or into the student to offer like a support for their growth process. So I was influenced in that way to kind of implement that myself. And at some point, you know, so I, I started doing that and that started i started noticing results with that with people that were receiving the service from me and then at some point you ended up receiving the vampire service from me and you were one of those people that noticed how it was kind of like in tandem with some pretty big changes that then started manifesting afterwards uh one of many people that have had that happen so it led you down a path that you were on of going through some deep occult initiations and as you progress through those, through those initiations, you are you are one of the people that has taken it very seriously and has really like gone very deep into the unconscious. I mean, during your process, you you left home, you traveled the entire United States, you've tra you've been to literally many different places. You made you let a lot of things go that a lot of people wouldn't to go into this depths of this initiatory journey. And since then, um, you have. Uh, completed your initiations within the clip off meaning you've you've processed a lot of repressed things inside of yourself to the point where you are a fully initiated occultist and you have the ability to transfer your energy field into your students now so it so before nick had this service i had nick doing my vampire ritual because i felt like he was ready to be able to perform this service and he was the only person that I felt like I could pass that to. Uh, so for a period of time, some of you in the community know this. I think most of you do that are part of the service. Nick has been doing my service and it's been extremely successful. Nick has shown that like he's he's a real deal practitioner. He's got the energy field that displays it and he knows how to do the ritual, which we went over when we were, uh, you know, working together when you when you took on that role, when you decided that was something you wanted to do with me. Uh, I basically took you through the process and you took that and you sort of implemented your own creativity with it. And it's been very successful. And it's come to a point where it now makes more sense that Nick, as he's growing his business, that he has his own service and that I run my own service and we can bring them together to support each other so that we can basically hit it from all angles at the same time. Um, so in regards to the Hecate ritual, in regards to the vampire service, there's way more similarities between these services than there actually are differences. So I know that you mentioned for your Hecate ritual, there's a strong component that absolutely connects you to Hecate. And I think that's a very powerful aspect of it. I think that's huge. But that doesn't mean that in the vampire ritual, there's not like that connection either to that Hecate force or to any of the, the entities or the dark feminine figures that exist. I think they're all grounded in that feminine, that this feminine dark current. But I think you definitely 
you definitely add that component in in a very unique way, in a very polarized way, actually. It's like you connect the energy field of the participant to specifically Hecate, which is very unique. Um, but ultimately, the services are very similar in nature. So basically, what what it, what's happening is, once again, if you're receiving the vampire ritual, you are getting my energy field transferred into you as the participant, and that is going to act as a support for your growth process. When you get the Hecate ritual, you are getting Nick's energy field transferred into yours to support your growth evolutionary process. Now, through that transfer, what you're going to experience is you're going to experience similar things that me and Nick have both been through and we've experienced ourselves through our healing journey, through our initiatory journey, because we carry the data in our energy field. We carry the, we could even go as far as saying the genetic code within our nervous system from going through these changes. So that's what we're offering to, to the public. That's what we're offering to anyone that's studying from us or, or acting as students with us, um, where that can absolutely support someone on their process working with the darker aspects of spiritual evolution. I think that's something me and Nick are definitely kind of geared towards and what we specialize in. And we reach a certain type of audience with this type of work that we're doing. Um, now, what you can expect when you get this energetic transfer is in many ways, you can expect a guide on the other side. So you can expect me, you can expect Nick being an actual energetic guide for you through your process that is going to help sort of support you navigating the important things that need to be understood while you're going through your own uh deep initiatory process, traveling into your deep unconscious mind. So of course, we've had to learn from our own mistakes. You know, we're not perfect human beings. So there's a lot of things that we had to kind of go through to then learn from mistakes. And this is stuff that you could think of our higher self has an ability to uh, offer to anyone who's receiving the service based on, okay, you know, helping our students navigate from the mistakes that we've made and, and not having to make those same decisions. You can expect repressed emotions to start surfacing through the body. Um, you can expect maybe a period of fatigue, a period of like needing, needing some rest because of these things that are going to start coming out from underneath. Um, this is healthy. This is, this is the body starting to come to a, uh, integrated state when these emotions start to come out. You can expect your awareness to start shifting when it comes to your awareness on your negative emotions. So rather than being in a state of like resisting them and rather than being in a state of running away from them or especially demonizing them, you actually start understanding the importance of them. And there's a lot more acceptance there, which allows the the healing process to really flourish. This is like this is actually the key component to diving into the, the deep unconscious, hence the connection between Hecate and the underworld. It's like that feminine energy is so important to be receptive to and to feel the emotions when going into the personal underworld, which is the deep unconscious. And for sure, these services are supporting this whole process. And... um it also really sets the stage to start undoing um, religious programming. This is something I've really noticed with people where uh, a lot of people getting into spirituality or into the occult in general typically will see things from that very dualistic lens of like, this is good and this is evil and what's good, what's evil, right? How do I attach to good? How do I resist evil? And what I come to find is I understand that perspective. I used to be that way myself. But what what you what you do tend to learn as you continue to experience, you know, emotional healing and and uh, spiritual development is you do start to realize we're not living in a world where there's true good and evil. Good and evil exists from one perspective. It's a duality, but in in the bigger scale, it is all actually unconditional love. And um, the, the services that we're offering helps to undo the religious programming of seeing things from that lens of good and evil.
so that you don't have to assign yourself to one thing over the other and then inherently create an enemy because of it. That's one thing that I've come to learn is when you assign to good over evil, you've now created an enemy. And if everything is truly connected to the, to the source or to the one, then you've just demonized something inside of yourself when you create an enemy. You've created an enemy internally. So yeah, so it starts the process of understanding the nature of dark energy and chaos so that you can understand the role it's playing in the bigger picture of things, which undoes religious programming. It, does a, it starts to undo a lot of religious trauma in that respect. And that can be really important to make much deeper pro- uh, progress within the unconscious, because as you know, Nick, you get we get to a certain point where you you have you you almost have to face the reality that everything's unconditional love, or else you go insane. You will it's like you you'll lose your mind if you if you attach to this is evil, because then you're creating enemies that don't actually exist, and it just can't happen. Um. I think another another powerful aspect that our services offer is the awareness on how to move darker energy as well, on how to actually and consciously move this energy in a certain way where we are not resistant to dark energy in the sense of we are not beings that are, you know, afraid to initiate dark energy onto something else if we feel like there is a a reason for that taking place like an evolutionary reason so the way that i kind of like to look at look at it is as if we become vessels for this dark feminine n- nature within the universe that is is responsible for bringing karma to other things that are needing to receive their cause and effect. So as an example, uh, if I'm living my life and someone is actively abusing me, of course, the best thing that I can do is create a boundary and try to separate myself from the abuse and self-reflect to figure out what it's rooted in. As beings that are working with this darker current, which is once again, what's being supported through these rituals that me and Nick are offering, we are also learning how to take dark energy into our own hands and potentially initiate that onto a target or onto someone who's an abuser so that they can face their karma directly and we are the ones that send that energy back and this is you know this is one of the big differences for someone that's working with those darker evolutionary arts over someone who's not so yeah i think these are the things that are are some of the most valuable and important parts of these services that we're offering. And, you know, once again, adding that component of the box, the Hecate's box, I think that's super, super fascinating. Like it's super cool. It's almost like, um, it's like, um, it's like a matrix that, that you're, you're creating using this, this feminine energy of Hecate that once again is designed to nurture and support your students that are receiving the service. And that's exactly what my Atlantean crystal grid is designed to be an energetic matrix that is absolutely designed to support the self development of the students that are in the matrix. And I can imagine, you know, with my service in tandem with your service, if someone has both that is really covering all the different bases and giving them as much energetic support as you could possibly have. I mean, that's, if you want to get the most out of it, then that's what someone would do. Um, now, another thing that I want to say is that with the services that me and Nick are offering, these aren't necessary. This is not something you are forced to do or you have to do to be successful or anything in that nature. This offers a massive support though. Like this can be very important for people to take advantage of, but it's not necessary. So it's not like if you don't do this, you're guaranteed not going to do well with your initiations. It's kind of like the same concept as if you don't have a mentor, you can do it. But in reality, having a mentor you're going to be so much better off. So that's one thing that I do want to cover with that. 
is there any other like pieces that that you that come up that are similar between the services that we're offering? Um, well, not similar, but I was just gonna touch on the um, on that mentor aspect. So for me, I, I found when I got the vampire service, it's almost like um, so somebody was telling me when they were joining this occult order, I think it was the Golden Dawn. It was basically, there's a form of initiation that can take place where the higher up, the guy that pretty much runs this um, sector or this, you know, tier of this order, he's pretty much the leader or the mentor, the guide, the teacher. And there's an initiation that takes place when you actually initiate into the order where the teacher um, does a ritual that imparts his wisdom onto you and his knowledge and his energy and so you know that's pretty much exactly like what we're doing and we didn't even know that that takes place in you know an, in occult orders so i thought that was very fascinating um but it's like having an energetic mentor you know that's already gone through the experience and it's like wouldn't you want to you know take on the attributes and the knowledge necessary to you know for what what they did you know pass down to you basically so you can do it too and mm. obviously you don't need that you can do it and carve the path on your own but you know when we're going through these deeper darker initiations i want everything that can help me on my journey i don't because it can be dangerous i mean there's people that obviously they go, you know, crazy, they go insane, they lose their minds, they, who knows, there's a lot of things that happen to people that prematurely get into this type of stuff. And so just for my own sake, I would like to get everything necessary, everything that I could possibly get to make sure I am more than ready. And so once you get, you know, apply all of these things such as the obviously the the services that we offer and then the even we have the lucifer's foundation course mm -hmm. kind of laying out how to build a foundation with lucifer um you know these are all things that can make the process highly successful compared to somebody that's just like opens up a book and it's like oh i want to do that and then they prick their finger and you know all hell breaks loose and they have no idea what they're even getting themselves mm. into. Um, so I think, you know, what we're doing is really offering value and an energetic structure to make this just easier, make it a hell of a lot easier. And because there, I personally don't believe that there is a, a large amount of people that have actually initiated the clip off. It's just, it's very occult knowledge and obviously there's people there's occultists or teachers that maybe have said that they've done it but you can kind of tell by the way that somebody communicates and the way that they deal with things whether that's they're telling the truth or not um it really comes down to how much balance they have within their perspectives and their mind and and the way that they basically see the world and so, you know, if we're still attacking things, we're still getting triggered by these people or we're saying they're evil, we have to fight up back against them. These are all traits of somebody who's still going through the process or somebody who hasn't successfully gone through the process. Because eventually you do come to like a, an inner equilibrium where it's just like a peace. It's like, oh, I see the purpose of that. Okay, I understand this. And it's just like peace, you know, nothing, you don't have to fight anybody, you don't have to attack anything. You don't have to, you know, there's nothing out to get you, like some cons grand conspiracy of these people following you or whatever, you know. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Very well said. Very well said. And I completely understand what you're saying. And it's true. It's, uh, you know, it's, you get to, uh, you become, you get to a more, much more, um, integrated state. And uh, there's a lot of people that are not, they're initiating the clip off. They're working with some of these darker entities and they're not integrating it properly. 
because they are lacking foundational tools and foundational principles. And this is what I currently work with with clients during mentorships. Nick, I know, has been doing that. I, I'm not sure if you're continuing the mentorships. Is that something you're continuing? I was going to take it, give it about a, a month break for now. And because I'm going through a transition myself of potentially moving and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was going to give myself extra time and space. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably reintegrate that and continue the mentorships as well. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, and right now, once again, we've created a course together called the Lucifer's Foundation course, which literally covers those foundational principles. If you know any of you don't have the opportunity to work with us directly, um, that course covers everything. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of people that are not integrating it properly. Um, and um, there's just a lot of a lot of re trauma. What's the word? Re trauma traumatization. That's the word. Re-traumatization that takes place. That's what happens if this stuff, if you approach the clip off without a healthy foundation, which is once again, the foundation is also what we're offering through these ritual services, through the vampire service, through the Hecate ritual service. This is us offering our energetic foundation to you based on what we've had to learn on a actual like occult science level. And Going into it without that, there's so much room for re-traumatization, which means you're you're re-experiencing traumas that are existing within the deep unconscious and surfacing the negative emotions, and you're not understanding how and what to do to actually integrate and process them effectively. And that's what leads to people going into really negative spirals or dark loops when they get into this ritual work and they don't have that in place. So it is really cool what me and Nick are doing because we are professional occultists and because we understand how to use these psychic sciences, we can enter, we don't necessarily need to be physically there um, in order to offer our support to you. Now, obviously in the physical, that's the best way to do it, but we, but when it comes to these services we're offering, this is powerful and it should not be underestimated because uh, I I can't tell you how many people I've gotten feedback from that have literally said, Jeremiah, like I'm seeing you in my dreams and you're literally helping me work through things that I've never, I've never been able to face within myself. And uh, you know, just on a practical front, like what could some of these things look like? You know, you get the ritual from, from Nick's service. Next thing you know, uh, you are having dreams at night where Nick might show up and offer some sort of awareness or offer some guidance in regards to something you're having trouble working through. And the next thing you know, Nick releases a YouTube video actually covering exactly what you're trying to learn more about. Or you're led to a certain ch- video on his channel already that covers exactly what you're trying to learn about. Or there's just more opportunity and room for circumstances to align that then give you what you need to better understand the situation. That's the power of these different ritual um, services uh, that we're offering. And once again, they are very, they are much more similar in nature than they are different. That's the main piece that I want people to understand between our services. They're way more similar than they are different. There's just because my service is the vampire service doesn't mean that with Nick's service, you don't get vampiric uh, qualities that come from that. Just because Nick's service is the ritual with Hecate service doesn't mean you get don't get aspects of Hecate with my service either. So they do play very well together. And once again, it's it's that support from different angles. Um, and then once again, with the 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 box, the Hecate box, and then my Atlantean crystal grid. That's like a whole nother, this is like a whole nother layer of occult science that we're implementing with this. Like the actual placing of the students or the participants in this energetic matrix that we're designing with intentions to help them evolve authentically. That that people don't understand how powerful this stuff really is, but it can literally create an environment, an energetic environment that is consistently streamlining to the student, to the participant that is setting the stage for exactly what they need to come in and and basically not being in resonance for things that are potentially going to be un, unhealthy for them. Um, 
So do you, do you have any like final thoughts on, on any of that stuff? Yeah, I think that, that, that makes sense where it kind of, you know, we're on the path of, of self-realization and we tend to have, whether it's different like coping mechanisms or ways of being when certain things come up within our life, we, we all will tend to fall back on this or like, Oh, I can just do this or I can, maybe I'll start tomorrow and I'll just, I'll, I'll have a cheat day and I'll do this. And really, you know, we, we convince ourselves that these things aren't that big of a deal and we can just start on it later. We can do it tomorrow, but really these, those types of things really can harm us and they, they chip away at us and they slowly, you know, really do us more harm than good. And so with these services, it, it kind of implements in that, that structured energy of, you know, obviously the consciousness of these dark feminine forces, such as Hakate, also, you know, our knowledge and, and energy into that as well. And it can kind of, you know, when these situations come back up and we see some of the things that we already knew we shouldn't be doing, but we just do them anyway, we can, we kind of be like, you know, okay, like, okay, I, I see this from this perspective now, this is probably not good for me. And I'm going to make the decision to not do that because we can see it from a, a bigger perspective. So like, for example, um, throughout the mentorships, I know you've explained to me that there'll be individuals that smoke cigarettes and we'll say, okay, let's wean down. And then, you know, we'll do, instead of five today, we'll do three tomorrow. And then maybe we'll do two the next day. And then you said typically before even the last day, you know, they go to smoke a cigarette and they're like, I don't even want one. Like I just, there's something in me that just does not desire this anymore. Like it's nasty, it's gross. I knew that, but like now I don't even desire it. And so that's kind of the energy that we're talking about is the things that we know is bad for us. There's a part of us that keeps going back to those things, even though we probably don't even want to do them until eventually we can from these services they can support the energy of like i don't even want those things anymore like i have no actual desire to fall back on these things so mm. i think that mm. can be very beneficial and one of the big benefits of of the service itself but obviously you know it's not like a cure all like you just get it and then you're just cured you know we still do have to make that the choices on our end at the end of the day so for sure. Yeah, I think that actually opens up a great part of this to talk about with what you just said there is that, yeah, this these services are not like you get the service, your life is completely the way you exactly want it to be. You're this powerful occultist that now controls the entire planet. These services set the stage for you to go through real emotional processing to the point where it can lead you to actual occult initiation, real deal occult initiation that does eventually lead to power. And, but through that, there is the responsibility of doing the work. And once again, these services are not the cure all. They're not like get rich quick. It's not like, Hey, I got the service. My life is completely different now and I'm forever better. It will initiate that process of shifting, subtle shifting and changes that will align your life in the right direction for what it is that you're truly wanting and needing as you're pursuing this path of growth with the darker evolutionary uh, energies. Um, and yeah, all of it is rooted in that feminine energy. So me and Nick's service is rooted in the dark feminine which is why if you look at the top of the screen right now, we have the, the order sigil for order 47, which is what we're in the process of creating. And you can see that it's the symbol of the upside down triangle, which is very correspondent for the womb, which is the womb energy. And this is just that subconscious symbol of that deeper feminine energy that we're all basically birthed from. And you know, getting in tune with that, that helps us to understand the importance of our body sensations and our emotions. Um, and, you know, when we work on those emotions, that's when we start 
being able to make decisions that are actually in our best interest. So on an emotional level, we get to process whatever we've been avoiding because that's what the smoking was doing or that's what the unhealthy thing was. It's like avoiding an emotion, getting the, the rituals starts to show you the importance of your emotions and gives you space to actually feel them and know that it's important to feel them. And when you do that, you start making decisions out of actual self-love where it's like, wait, I have, I'm feeling this. This doesn't feel comfortable, but I actually like it because I know I should be doing it. And the more you do that, the more consistent you are with it, the more you get to that space where it's like, I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to do the thing that I know I shouldn't be doing because I'd rather actually be present with what I'm feeling right now. And this is when your life starts to make significant improvements. But once again, this these services that we're offering are like the invisible infrastructure that can really support everyone's development by establishing a healthy foundation and then eventually transitioning into these deeper occult initiations, potentially like the clip off. Um, so with that piece, did you have like any final pieces on on the similarities of our services? Um, I don't think so. We also need okay. to touch on the the dates of how we're doing that. So new moon yeah. and full moon. Yeah. So that's going to go into the next piece. So the differences of our services. Um, so some of the differences I want to jump out the gate is the difference between me and Nick. You know, there's a lot of similar things that we bring to the table on an energetic level, but there's also unique differences between my energy field and Nick's energy field. And that is also going to be obviously implemented into the rituals that we are going to be performing. So with Nick, you're going to get a, you know, a creative twist with what he's bringing to the table in regards to how he does his ritual. And the same thing with me. Uh, and that's going to be a little different. There's going to be a little bit of differences there. But once again, overall, we, me and Nick do seem to be coming from a pretty similar, I guess the word is like oversoul. I like to call social memory complex. It's a similar type of energy that seems to be influencing us to be doing these things in the first place. So there are those similarities, but there are those little differences at the same time. And another difference is the dates. I think this is the one that this is the most important difference. The date that we are performing the rituals. I think this is probably the one of the coolest parts of this whole thing because it really taps the participant in in a way that they can really get the most value out of everything if they're taking advantage of everything. Um, and at the end, you know, once we cover the differences, which I think it's it's not that many, we're gonna I want to give them like a structure to kind of like understand that they can follow to like what would we recommend for them with all these different services that that we offer uh, we can cover that in a second but um the dates so me and nick have have basically decided from from us uh, conversating about this that um we decided that it would be very helpful for us to perform our services on different dates that are in alignment with certain astrological cycles that make the most sense for the students or make the most sense for the participants. So basically what we concluded is that one ritual, so my ritual will be performed on the full moon and Nick's ritual, the other ritual will be performed on the new moon. And we're going to, by targeting the new moon into the full moon, this in itself is very significant because of just the differences in those types of moon cycles in regards to what they represent. And because our rituals are very similar in nature, it, it's like a double whammy. So it's like the new moon's like planting the seed, the full moon's like the manifestation. And if you have both of these services, you're getting both on the new moon and the full moon, which means it's that's the most fertile grounds for energetic effects to really seep through. And it's covering it from all angles. So with that, is there, you know, is there anything that you want to share on that subject? Yeah. So I think that's going to be super exciting and super awesome because that makes, you know, if you're, if you want, or if you feel called to be a part of both the rituals, um, you know, obviously you can choose whether you just want to do mine or just do his, but we recommend 
to be a part of both of them. And the cool thing about it is that you're a part of two rituals every single month. And, you know, for me, I'm going to kind of gear the ritual um, based on each uh, full moon's astrological alignment. So, you know, last month was on Gemini and next month's going to be a different sign. So um, I, I like to gear the ritual based on that alignment. And so it's going to be a little bit different every single month based on what it means to us. And, you know, we both, we pull a card, a tarot card for each ritual, which is sort of like a group, um, a group thing that we're all kind of experiencing and going through as a whole. And for me, I've been kind of breaking down the card and how that applies to you. Um, and so f for the new moon and the full moon, it's going to be on a different day every single month. So this month, the full moon was on the 27th. Next month, the full moon will be on the 26th. And then the month after that, I'll have to look it up, but it's like 24th or 25th. So it will vary on the days. Um, but we'll make sure to, you know, fill everybody in on what day is what, for example. So mm. and I'll probably need to look up what, what's the new moon date so we can tell people um, when that when that day is. But I think that's going to be, you know, about two weeks from now, I believe. Yeah, that that's the cool part is they're, they're always going to be like, at contrast with each other. So the full moon will always be more towards the one end of the month and then the new moon's always towards the other end. So it's like that double whammy. And that's exactly exactly what it is with with these rituals that we're offering. Um it's like you can have the vampire service alone and get benefits. You can have the ritual uh the hecate ritual alone and get benefits. And if you have both, it's like taking two sockets and plugging it into the same source. You're getting two two powers coming into one. Um, so it literally just increases everything. Um, so obviously that'll be up to the person if that's what they feel they're they're interested in. Then um, so then moving forward, then so as I said, Nick has been doing my vampire ritual uh basically up until this point for the most part. Um, I think for what three months now you've done it. I think it's I'm at like five months now. <laughs> really? Has it been five months? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, five months. So Nick's been doing this for almost half a year. Um, so moving forward, then, um, once this video is released, um, I'm gonna start doing my ritual again. Um, and then Nick is gonna be doing his ritual. That way, if any of you are going to be participating in the differences between our services, you're going to have both of our energetic influences together into one. Um, so yeah, so very cool on that forefront. I think what we definitely want to cover now is kind of like what is the ideal path that someone can follow with these different services that right now we have available. Um, because I'm sure a lot of people that are tuning in kind of understand that as of recently, there's been a lot of things that have come out all between the ebook package, between the Lucifer's Foundation course, between what we're changing with, you know, the services that we're offering and what we're presenting to the public. So the ideal path, and we'll connect this back into the order. So me and Nick are still working on the infrastructure to the order. So we're not going to go into too much detail with that yet. But we can give you a general idea of how this will lead into the order and what to expect. So the general path that is most recommended is that you do have the vampire ritual. You do have the Hecate ritual. With those, that would be the first step. Then I would say getting the ebook package is next. So this comes with four ebooks, which is the angels, the 72 angels, 72 demons, the clip off, the tree of life, and then the tunnels of set and the major arcana. This is your general education that you can have on your tool belt that you can start to look over and get um, accustomed to, to understand what a cult initiation is all about and what some of these spiritual um, meanings are representing. Um, 
from that space, once you have the services, once you have the ebook package, then truly the next step would be um, the Lucifer's Foundation course to get a head start with developing a foundation and also developing a healthy relationship with Lucifer. Now, this is going to be for someone that's, you know, taking their practice a little bit more seriously and someone that understands that this, you know, this stuff does get deep. This stuff does get intense. Um, so if you're just like a complete beginner and you're not sure yet, if you want to like really dive in, maybe the Lucifer's foundation course isn't for you yet. I would say probably getting the ritual services that we offer as foundational support, as well as the education is going to be for you. But if you are the person that has a stronger intention and you're like, no, I'm, I'm in this, this is what I want. Lucifer's foundation course is absolutely going to be helpful, very valuable. It's literally like getting a mentorship from me and Nick without us having to physically be there. It's going to be on 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 the uh, the modules, and it's going to be implementing specifically Lucifer, how to develop a relationship with Lucifer. Um, that so far that's the main struck that that would be the main path that I think me and Nick would both recommend that any of you listening here uh, should follow. This will absolutely prepare for the entrance into Order 47. So with Order 47, the general idea is we are going to have an entire course material of a lot of different structured and organized content, very high quality structured, organized content, taking you from everything, absolutely everything you need to know about the foundation all the way up to advanced practices of clipothic initiation. We're going to have it structured in different by different steps, basically, that is going to correspond to different degrees of the order itself. But generally, everything before the order with the ritual services, the ebooks, and potentially the Lucifer's Foundation course it would be highly beneficial that you invest in these things first before initiating into the order. Um, and then obviously from the order, there's going to be a lot, there's going to be a whole structure with that in regards to how me and Nick are going to basically uh, overwatch people going through their own initiations and offer value to help them navigate and things of that nature, uh, including all the course material content that comes with it. So there's a whole new layer to that, which we're not going to talk about today because we're still in the process of putting it together. But with that being said, would you say you agree with what I said so far, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. That is a lot of material to um, you know, study before if you are going to um, join the order and sort of go through with those practices. Um, because some of the curriculum within the order will be the books. So we'll want to, we'll want people to get the books sort of like, you know, when you go to school, you know, you're, you're joining, signing up for class, you have to get textbooks and, and different material for the class. And that's sort of what these, um, the ebook package that we have is sort of like that. But in this regard, we can study the material before we go into the class basically. <laughs> And so, yeah, I think that is, that's pretty much what we offer right now. And I think that is a good idea to go through with all of, all of it if you're, you know, super practiced and super serious about it. But I would definitely say, um, you know, one of the first things to get would be the ebook because you, you don't have to necessarily practice anything, but you're just a accumulating knowledge and from there, you know, having a solid foundation of, you know, the Kabbalistic tree, the, the angels, the demons, then we can really move forward and see, is this path really for us? Because, you know, we have to learn all about the ins and outs of the, of what we're getting ourselves into, and then, you know, kind of go from there. So that mm. would be definitely the first thing I would recommend, at, you know, is either the, our ritual services um, and the, uh, eBooks packages. So for sure, for sure. And, and to just add to that, uh, just so everyone knows, like, and I know like Nick put a lot of time and energy into 
getting the information from very important sources of where that stuff comes from, like the stuff that all the professional cultists are using from a knowledge standpoint and taking it and then bringing it all in one easy to find location that's understandable. So it's like you don't have to read the riddles in between the message. You, you're just getting it basically hand fed. It's like, oh, I get it. I can digest this easily. And it's, you know, just so people understand, it's like the a lot of the knowledge that's in these books that you've you spent a lot of time making, um, it's, it's, it's advanced knowledge. Like this is real knowledge that professional occultists are using. And it's not like, this is not something you're just going to, oh, look, a, a book on spirituality. This is real heavy knowledge. And it's that kind of stuff that if you, if you wanted, you could take the knowledge and actually use some of the practices and cause some big changes in your life. It's that type of knowledge. So uh, just so everyone knows, like it's, it is the real deal stuff there. Um, and it is going to be the curriculum for the order. So we, we absolutely recommend everyone purchases those and, and gives it a nice look over at least twice, maybe three times, four times and turn it into something you can always have as a tool, like something you can always refer back to so that when things start getting more real and more serious, you can use it as a, as a navigation tool to understand what's spiritually, what's going on with you, what's potentially connecting with you. Um, I think there's a lot of value there. So yeah, I mean, other than, uh, other than that, that's pretty much it on my end. I think, I think we said what we needed to say. I think this video gave some clarity on these different services that we're offering and how they both work very nicely together and how it's all designed to support this order 47 that we're in the process right now of, of pulling together. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Um, other than that, I was going to say, if you're interested in either of the services, I think we can have a, a link to both of them in the, in this video, in the description. Um, so yeah, and you can just check it out. It's, it's on our Patreons. So I think it's what tier four for you or three tier. So for me, it's tier three and tier four of the Patreon. Cool. Tier three on my Patreon. Yeah. So Wonderful. So, yep. Great idea. We will have both of the links right below. Check out the patrons. If you want to participate, you know exactly where to go. So cool. cool. So I, I appreciate you coming on, Nick, and kind of uh, going over this with me. And I look, I look very much forward to what we've got going on here. I think I really do think that what we're building with with this infrastructure and how it's going to lead into this order, I think it's going to cause a massive influence. Uh, in the for sure in the spiritual community for sure in the occult community but i even feel like on a significant mass collective level definitely 100 percent. wow wonderful so other than that ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in and uh i look forward to seeing you in in some of the next videos some of the next podcasts and other than that this is where we're going to wrap it up so thank you nick all right thank you Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye.